Hey guys, I'm gonna tell you a story about my adventure of traveling to Belarus to visit family last year. As you might know, Belarus is under some heat right now with its borders, and to get to Belarus I had to go through some hoops, which I will explain later. Also, I put some Call of Duty gameplay in the background to have something for you to watch, and also include some pictures I took during the trip for context. Now, I went to Belarus at the end of August 2022, and the territorial conflict was already mid-flame, so yes, it was pretty risky, and you would think the major airlines would cancel their flights to the surrounding areas, and you're actually right. The flights were so badly cancelled that I'm actually still waiting for my ticket refund from August 2022. <laughs> it's crazy, so we had to order another ticket to go there, and I'm still waiting for the refund for this first ticket. So, Turkish Airline, if you're hearing this, please contact me. Honestly, dude. I need the money. <laughs> but in order to actually get to Belarus for my vacation, we had to take a trip from Canada to Poland, and from Poland to Lithuania, where my aunt and uncle would meet us there, aka my mom and I, to drive us through the border back to our dacha, which is a little village house in the outskirts of the city. It's where people go to like relax during the summer or sometimes even after work, you know, it's like in the nature type of thing. There are a few details I want to give about the flights to Belarus. So for example, in Toronto airport while waiting for my flight, I ordered some food to pass the time and to eat something. And to top it all off, I got a nice cup of coffee. But little did I know that that coffee will become the culprit in my stomach that will test Lithuanian sewage system strength. On the flight to Poland from Toronto, I didn't sleep. I can't really sleep on planes. I don't know, it's just the positioning and I just... I don't know, I, could, I can never sleep on planes. But <laughs> to pass the time, I was playing Tetris on the in-flight entertainment system and I actually ended up getting the highest score in my seat in Tetris or a plane, I don't really know if the score is shared between the whole plane or just the seat, but, but I was on top of the leaderboards on my screen, so that's all that matters. And the game was getting so laggy in the end, it was really hard to continue, and I eventually ended up losing the game, literally because of lag, not because of skill. Because the faster the game went, the slower the, the game was, and the laggier it was, because the CPU couldn't handle it for some reason. So I ended up losing, but I was on top of the leaderboard, so... Pog. We eventually got to Poland and on to our next flight to Lithuania. This is where Toronto's coffee got its first strike. I couldn't hold in the stomach anymore and I had to go to the toilet where the only sound insulation were the plane engines. I, had, I did have to wait at the time because the plane helpers were handing out food and there was no other space to go to the bathroom because it was the, at the very end of the plane. So I finished my business in the toilet. It was the first time I had to go take a dump on a plane, which was actually a pretty surreal experience and would recommend if you have a chance. It's not like every day you can take a dump very high up in the air going very fast. I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty cool. When we landed in Lithuania, we got picked up by our aunt and uncle. Everything is going to plan so far, except the coffee got its second and final strike. While going to the border, we had to stop at a random gas station because this is the only place I would be able to go to the bathroom before the border control. And I'm not sure how the bathrooms or if they have the bathrooms there. I don't take any chances and I really have to go anyway. Here we are in the middle of nowhere, near a nice little gas station. I get in, ask for the toilet in Russian because I didn't know what language Lithuanians speak. So I just, you know, <laughs> defaulted to Russian and boom, language barrier. I eventually find the toilet, go in, it's super clean and nice smelling, but not for long though. The coffee strike is successful, almost a day's hours worth after. And here in this video right now, I wanna shout out the Lithuanian sewage system for pulling through, dude. Let's give a round of applause for it, man. It did a great job. <laughs> May your infrastructure hold up and your flow be free. I finally feel relieved and then we go to the border to Belarus. The border to Belarus took around 8 to 9 hours to get through, I'm not even joking. We were in line, people were standing, we had, we had to get out of the car just to stretch our legs. It was, it was crazy. We were car number 30 with a longer line behind us and even getting longer as the time went. Each car took a while to get processed that we even witnessed a whole shift change within the workers. There was the first stage where they asked us what was the purpose of going to Belarus and then the second stage of actually checking passports, bag checks and getting the approval to move into the country. This took a long time, it was very boring and I was exhausted by the end that I was falling asleep on the way to our dacha. I spent some time in Belarus with family, Pog, now it's time to go back. This time we took a whole coach bus from Belarus to Lithuania, then a plane from Lithuania to Poland and then another big plane from Poland back to Canada. And this part was wild, I tell you. We left the Belarus bus terminal around 11 p.m., drove back to the border, and boom! Another line of cars, plus other coach buses with more people to check. It was gonna be a long night again. And our flight leaves Lithuania to Poland at 6 a.m., and they're not gonna wait for us. This should be enough time, right? Just to lay in the bus and then get through the border into the airport in Lithuania? 
Nope. At 2 a.m. our driver comes up to the bus and says, Good night, guys. We'll be here all night, so you might as well sleep. We for sure 100% gonna miss our flight at this case. But good thing there were other people in the bus who were also taking the same flight as us. So we kind of made a little rebellion group against the bus to actually go through the border on foot between the two countries. Throughout both trips, like in and out of Belarus, when I was going in and then when I was going out, there were people going on foot through the customs and we became one of those groups, I guess, right? Luckily, we got served by some border patrol officers and we let through the border after they heard our plea. AKA, us being late for our flights if we just stay in line and wait for everything to go through normally. I know some ways that it could have gone more wrong, but thankfully, we officially entered Lithuania. Not to get to the airport. Some of the group members got lucky and got a ride from other people in the border who just exited the border. I remember there were two girls who got a ride from some rando and I keep thinking what a sim the driver was because a dude from our little rebellion group even asked him for a ride first before those two and he got denied but he, went. But then he ended up taking those two girls to the airport. It's crazy man, it's a wild world. We weren't really looking for a private driver so we ended up walking another 30 minutes to the first gas station on the road from the border and ended up calling a taxi. Also, there was a cute kitty that I kind of befriended and we had to leave him for the airport after 20 or 30 minutes of waiting for the cab driver. So at that point, it was 3 a.m. and the cab driver shows up. Bro, the cab driver was speeding, bro. We were going like 120 to 140 at some points in the highway, bro. And I'm pretty sure the speed limit's like 100 at most, you know, I don't know. <laughs> but thanks to the cab driver, we both get to the airport, both pretty tired and pretty much dead at that point. And we just wait for the flight from Lithuania to Poland. The flight was pretty normal, not, nothing extraordinary happened you know I didn't drink any coffee beforehand so there was no strikes or anything so you know I was just chilling kind of dead you know from from the whole adventure with the border patrol and everything in Poland we had a five hour layover from Poland to Canada which I also didn't sleep at I just can't sleep in like public places you know it's crazy my survivalist things 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 take over some shit I have no idea and you know I want to mention I always hate the flights back to your home because they're always longer than the flights to your you know vacation place it's because like you're you're anticipating for the whole thing to be over and you're you, and you notice the time way more and then it goes way slower and it just like it's a whole you know domino effect and as always it was a pretty big plane i couldn't sleep and it was even worse dude i was like getting like shriveling fingers you know just because i couldn't get i couldn't wait to get off the plane you know it was like the plane it was hot you know it was like we, we were flying in the daytime so the plane was getting hotter than in the nighttime when going to the vacation place it was just it was terrible i, I hate the flights back dude I, I don't know what to say at this point i probably haven't slept in like you know 48 to maybe like 30 hours you know but we, but we got home safely and then my dad picked us up and we are here now probably won't be going for a little while at least until the war is over i i don't know i don't know the future plans and stuff but this year i'm not going but yeah so the border adventure was actually pretty terrifying because I didn't know how the officers would react with a bunch of strangers trying to leave the country in the current state of the world And I'm not gonna lie. I didn't want to leave the bus But my mom insisted on going because we were actually gonna be late and we would have to buy a whole new set of tickets um, If we did stay on the bus and you know go through the regular procedure and you know we got home safely So that's pretty cool and yeah guys so you know moral of the story just don't travel during war times I guess but yeah Thank you guys for watching and listening and stuff, you know, hopefully you guys enjoyed the story. If you, want, if you guys want more videos, please subscribe and like. I would really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.